Mantles is brought to you by EXO Auto Works. EXO Auto Works is Colorado Springs home of the $50 synthetic blend oil change. Call now, 719-375-3232 or visit exoautoworks.com to make your appointment. Madrid Maintenance. Madrid Maintenance offers excellent handyman service in the Colorado Springs area starting at just 45 an hour. You can reach them by phone at 719-963-2020 or online at facebook.com slash Madrid Maintenance. Enharmonic Studios. Enharmonic Studios is a hybrid digital analog facility designed to be quality and affordable to anyone who wants to make history. Call today, 719-963-2020 or go to facebook.com slash enharmonic studios. You can see here, my fuel cap is leaking. You can't have a leaking fuel cap. That'll put you out of service. And depending on what kind of job you're on, like if you're on a pipeline job, if you have a leaking fuel system, a fuel cap, they will kick your truck right off the job. Live from EXO Auto Works. Streaming all over the world. We're coming for you, globalist! It's your weekly dose of toxic masculinity. Toxic masculinity. With Eric Madrid. And Trevor Lane. It's Mad Tools. Tools. What's up, everybody? Hello. It's been another, uh... uh what's well, been another week? Yes, it has, as yeah. usual. Uh, yeah. you think you'd think they'd stop having weeks after the first one, but <laughs> no, I got 51 more to go <laughs> every year. I uh, got my truck back today. That's good. Seems to be working all right. Um, now I can get back to work. Oof. I get back to work. Back to it. Let's see. Uh, we've got... Hell of a show for you. We do. We do. What else happened in your week? Oh, I had to go back to the Dirty Mo. The Dirty Mo. Yeah, Alamosa. Oh, yeah. Okay. We, yeah, the Dirty Mo. Um, I didn't realize if anybody's, you know, watching or listening or whatever, the the Gator Farm had a, a massive fire a couple mm. months ago. We went down just to check it out, show everybody the Gators and, you know, do the family event thing. They have so many fucking alligators. Yes, they do. And they're like, here, hold one. I'm like, fuck you. Yeah. Fuck you and the goat ass. Like, I'm not doing it. And they're like, no, nah, he's fine. I'm like, sure. Everybody else holds it at me. And I'm like, nah, I respect reptiles that have been on the earth for millions of years. Abby, Apex predators. Abby held a baby one, and she was, I don't know, maybe 10 when I took her there. And the whole time I just saw her dropping it and then me having to pay for every generation of gator that that could have produced for them. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> I'm like, you cannot drop this. You cannot drop this. <laughs> I was like, fucking granny pants, Nana's over there. And she's like, oh, look at him. I'm like, don't put him near your fucking face. Like, yeah. oh, I'm going to have to pay for surgery. <laughs> I'm like, oh. You sign a waiver when you go there. It says, yes, you do. Do, by law, you cannot sue if you die. Or dismembered while you're on the property. Yep. If you don't agree to this, get the fuck out. And I'm yep. like, yeah, you're hanging out with those gators at your own risk. And the snapping turtles. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. There's no. There's no. <sighs> you're at your own risk. And the emu. If you, you know that one takes your eyeball out. That definitely could have happened. But uh, I had a lot of fun. I like those gators. They're big critters but they they did that a fire so if you guys want to donate you know check out colorado gator farm they're hemmed up on permits like always right because that was an older building and now oh, it's got to yeah. get so re re redone code like today up yeah. to code today which right. is going to cost hundreds of thousands of dollars just yeah. to get a shed built out there in the sticks like you know up to code now so uh, yeah you know Maybe just go visit or, you know, drop a drop a little support down there for them. Because they did. They lost some critters, some parrots, and some reptiles, and that fire just happened too quick. Dang. Yeah. It's a bummer. Total bummer. Um, took the dog to the sand dunes. That was fucking hilarious. That sounds what hilarious. What is this? <laughs> 
what is this? Yeah, it was pretty funny. Pretty goddamn funny. Playing around in the sand. If you've never seen sand like that before, just he lost it's his wild. he lost his noodle. So that was about the best part. But uh found some more lakes. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Went tooling around Colorado basically and found some more camping spots. That's nice. Yeah, yeah. dude. Yeah, because so we gotta get you and the kids to and you know, to go up to San Isabel. We gotta do that one. And then there's one down in uh uh Kuchara, which is a cool little mountain town. Perfect little lake, like right below Timberline. It's gorgeous. It's wonderful. So Yeah. Cool. Should be fun. Except they want ten thousand dollars for like a beat up fucking camper. <laughs> I did. I started looking. Never thought I'd get old enough to want to go, you know, glamping. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now I'm like, uh, I don't want to sleep on a cot. Yeah. Every once in a while, um, someone mentions that, and I'm like, we have a timeshare. It's kind of why we have the timeshare is to have a place to stay wherever. Right. Let's just use our timeshare points. <laughs> there you go. <clears throat> but, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. We'll see. Cause cabins were outrageous. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Cabins were outrageous. They're very expensive. I was like, you guys want $700 a night for this? And I'm like, good for you. <laughs> the entrepreneur yeah. in me was if like, can, if you can pull that, great. Good for you. Are you booked? Yeah, for the next three weeks. I'm like, good for you. Well, Trevor turned 29 again this week. That's right, for the 15th time. <laughs> <laughs> He's 30, 14. So... Uh, yeah, Eric presented me with a nice little present here, some ammunition for my pistola. Thank you, buddy. Always, dude. Ammo's the best gift. That's a great gift, yeah. That's the best gift. Always buy something for your buddy that you would buy for yourself. Yeah, that's a good That's a good rule. Just depends on the caliber. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Well, we've got, like I said, we got a hell of a show. we got some news. we got some, uh, oh, geez, what else? we got some tools of the week. Um, we had a bearded veterans club, which is going to be f awesome. And then we have a guest. We do have a guest. Yeah. Mr. Robert Mack, who is, uh, an insurance adjuster. So if you've ever watched the movie fight club, <laughs> don't piss off Robert. Well, we're going to uh, <laughs> bring him in right now. <laughs> Robert, welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Hello and good to be here. Thank you very much. That's funny. How many times it's, have you had that conversation about recalls? Believe it or not, it is not that type of adjusting. <laughs> I'm the kind of adjuster that works for individuals. I work for um, people instead of insurance companies. So I end up inside a lot of houses and I end up inside a lot of burnt buildings and I get to see a lot of interesting things. But Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Where do you work out of? Florida. Area. All right. All right. I worked for a restoration company for a little while, so guys like you and me went rounds and rounds and rounds. Oh, okay. You're right. Although it depends on the adjust the uh, restoration company. Some of them just said if there was a public adjuster involved, they're not even going to bother to talk to them at all. And I'm kind of like that. If there's already a restoration company on the other side, What's the point? Like you go ahead. And no, I did. I, being the restoration company project manager for one, I disagree. I feel like even though I worked for one, uh, our branch was a bunch of Boy Scouts, almost literally. However, the entire company, the organization, corporate, was a bunch of fucking shysters. So the margins are violent on that. In that they department. are. They really are. <laughs> and that, I mean, that was my job. Was Is it PM? With, yeah, <laughs> that was my job. Make sure that we actually made you know twenty to forty percent somewhere in there, or else we were you know weren't going to get paid. And you and weren't going to get paid either. Yeah, and get the house done, and get the subs paid, and get the materials. I had a good line on materials, so like get these done. Let's get, roll them out. You know, I wouldn't say knock them out because you know quality takes time. Um, so that was actually my biggest argument with adjusters with with you know, you guys was, hey, this is taking a little longer than thought. And then I'd be like, yep, it is, and here's why. And I'd you know, always justify it, um, you know, rationally as of, well, this took this, this had to get to here, you know. The, these subs had to work on different jobs and then come over here and tool up. Like, I was, Trevor remembers, 
the stacks of paperwork and the and yeah. the guy on the other side of the desk he just got out of college he didn't even know which end of the hammer to hold and he just read some things and said no no this is all you get for it yeah <laughs> was, well, no ex, no no my worst was exactimate says that you know putting in a toilet is 15 dollars <laughs> it can be done in 10 minutes 10 minutes cool what about going to the store to get it what about buying it what about the cost of it what about the wax ring what about exactly mid assumes that you just shit all of that out on site so it's a, that it's already in the in the number it's already in there yeah so yeah i anytime somebody says well, i have exactimate i'm like cool i have a pen and paper and i have my home depot shopping cart let's see if they line up exactly <laughs> a little bit of experience on the job because you can live in home depot your oh, no. side of the job you are always i think as a project manager in the squeeze because yep. you have to deal with the insurance company on the one side and you got the homeowner on the other and the homeowner is never satisfied and you put in a new cabinet and it's right there you know it's brand new and you leave the house but the wife, who's been sitting there in a trance, staring at that cabinet the entire day and watching as the light just drift across, it. there's something wrong with my cabinet. Yep. I think there is something wrong with the grain in my cabinet. Yeah. Oh, you yeah. need to replace it, and it's not going to match the rest of them. You need to replace all of them. <laughs> so oh, yeah. You were in the squeeze, brother. And so for sure. And then, and then guys, oh, I, I, have, I have several pet peeves, <clears throat> and, and most of them, all right, the first one is, when the adjuster actually doesn't walk it with the PM, they come and they just schedule up, walk through, do the thing. I'm like, cool. Well, there's LVP on top of this, but they put it on top of tile. So there's an extra $1,000 of demo work happening mm. to get down to the subfloor. I don't believe I have a line item for that. I'm sorry. I can't pay you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, the other one was when the workers would show up and they were wearing their fucking keys on a carabiner on their hip. Walking through, scratching cabinets, scratching the walls, scratching the banisters. I was like, amigo, bro, leave your fucking keys. You know, I'd tell him in Spanish. I was like, llaves in the traca, bro, motherfucker. Scream at him. And they get all mad at me. And I'm like, nope. And the one public adjuster lady was like, oh, are these your guys? I'm like, no, but they're here. So they're my guys. Like, He's scratched the shit out of that cabinet just with his keys on his hip. It's like rule number two in construction. You don't wear your stuff like that on a new build. When you're when you're at um you're doing base and case and trimming everything out, you can't wear your belt and you can't wear your keys on your thing. You can't wear your big phone thing on your pocket, like you scratch walls, scratch doors. Those are my two big pet peeves. Mine was people doing things out of order. You would end up getting flooring in super early, and people wouldn't even realize. I mean, you haven't even done the vast majority of the work, and you're putting in the flooring, and you don't protect it, and then it completely gets destroyed. And yep. I mean, it's bad management. I had guys. I had guys grab the. Uh, we had the floors in, everything. We were getting the cabinets up and the toilets in, the vanities. Dude grabs it and drags the toilet. In the box across the floor on his LVP, the Procore. You just see, see the S lines. He's like, well, it's just it's just cardboard. I'm like, there are staples on the bottom of this box, bro. Congratulations. We'll have He's to like, well, what do we do? I said, you're staying late. He's like, what do you mean I'm staying late? I'm like, we're pulling this floor from the fireplace to the hallway, and then we're resetting it, and then... We're gonna go buy some the what whatever we don't have, and you're, we're gonna put it in. He's like, "Oh, motherfucker!" I'm like, "Well, you screwed it up." I feel bad. I tell you, the only well, I, I will say this too: my the company I work for went belly up. Ukraine popped off, and we figured out they were probably just laundering money for the mob. Yep, not a bad way to do it. I Better mean, ways for home builders, but that's not a bad way. Right? That's what I said. I was like, oh, it's this kind of job. Oh, you should have <laughs> fucking told me. <laughs> oh, my God. I know all about laundering money. God, guys, I didn't know that this was the deal. I thought you wanted us to buy house, you know, build, rebuild these people's houses. No, you got to work. All the laundering occurs above your pay grade. The people make the money higher. Uh -huh. oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, if you'd involve me, though, I'd we'd totally still be in business. I'd have figured that out. 
The real business to be in is insurance. If you can figure out how to have an insurance company, I'm ready to move to wherever. That has got to be the greatest casino move in the history of moves. Sure. They force you. It's government sanctioned legalized racketeering. Absolutely. You have to buy the product because you have no choice. You have to pay for the product because you have no choice. And the people that you pay get to define how they interpret the contract when things go wrong. Like, mm-hmm. I would do anything to get that deal. Mm, if it was next week, I'd be able to pay you, but you see it's this week. And there's a this week clause on the policy. And I'm sorry, I can't pay <laughs> <Yep. you. laughs> Well, right. de- depreciation says. What does it say? Oh, it says we can't pay you. Yeah, that's what depreciation <laughs> exactly. says. Exactly. No, I, I, I'm, I'm not gonna lie, man. I've thought about it. I've thought about doing like, um, except my grandpa did it in the '70s, and I told Trevor this story a long time ago. I'm gonna tell you this story because it, it's applicable. So there was Johnny Two Beers, is what we called him, all through my life, because Grandpa told us a story because he was a, a accident, a car accident claims adjuster. So he drives down to Trinidad, middle of the day, finds old. Uh, my grandpa's this uh, stout five foot two Spaniard immigrant. He's in his 20s. He's doing the thing. No, he's probably in his 30s by then. He's in the 30s. No, yeah, he's in his 20s because my mom was like 10, whatever it was. Anyway, early 70s. Um, early 70s. Yep. So <clears throat> I'm trying to just paint the picture here. He drives down to the border of New Mexico here in Colorado, drives down the border of New Mexico, and just outside of the res, there's this uh, Native American dude, probably all of, as my grandpa describes him, seven foot tall in a brick shit house, just (laughs) massive man, and he's like, this is an integral to the story, this dude was huge, he's bananas for fingers, the guy was just a beast, and I'm like, all right, grandpa, yeah, he's a big dude. He's like, all right, so we sit down, we go to the house, he wrecked his truck, he's like, okay, and, you know, he did the accident, he's like, I go home, I have two beers, and then I go bowling alley, and I have two beers, and then I come home, and I wreck my truck when I was going from my house to the bowling alley. Grandpa's like, two beers? I can drink two beers, it's no big deal, right? Two beers. You have two beers, drive to the bowling alley, it's like four blocks away. He's like... Probably wasn't drunk when he wrecked the truck. It's kind of icy. It's kind of jacked off down here. All right. Cool. Signs the paperwork. Does the thing. He's like, well, I'm going to head to the bowling alley. You want to have two beers? And Grandpa's like, well, I'm staying here this tonight. Yeah, screw it. I'll have two beers. He's like, cool. Johnny Two Beers comes out with four 40s of Mickey's. (laughs) Sets them down on the table. He's like, here's your two beers. Wow. (laughs) <laughs> Grandpa's like, rip. He tears up the paperwork. He's like, nah. Yeah, claim denied. Yeah, you were heap big drunk. <laughs> Johnny Two Beards. He's like, 240s. Mickey's 40s. I was like, wow. Well, for his size. <laughs> Regardless. I don't know, man. Doug's a big dude. I watch him pack a 40 away, and he's like, nerp. So, yeah, Johnny Two Beards. Good uh, claims adjuster story. I realize now that I came unprepared. If I'm ever back here again, I'm going to be at least Robert One Beer for sure. <laughs> right? <laughs> yes. Well, we'd send you one. <laughs> they haven't Actually, figured out how to make that work digitally yet. I know. Star Trek needs to catch up. <laughs> <laughs> Teleport that shit over there. Yeah. Good old Johnny Two Beers. So you work out of Florida. Which part of Florida? I'm in the central part, close to Orlando. It's an area called Claremont. If you thought about Orlando like an orange, then I guess we'd be where the the leaf would be right on top. Um, It's powered by the mouse. It's powered by all of the chaos that goes on down here. We are God's waiting room for all practical purposes. Oh, (laughs) yes. The chlamydia capital of the world. That is actually right up the street. That's the villages. That's what they call it. The villages. That's right. Yes. I knew it. Yes. Yes, the villages. I think there's something about the life expectancy. We don't really know whether it's shoot the rumor, but at a certain point, men start to die out. And there's just a whole bunch of horny old ladies up there. And I, I, I've heard stories. Let's just put it that way. 
Well, those stories have migrated west all the way to the Rocky Mountains. So. <laughs> I know. <laughs> place is legendary i think that's where everybody now rushes to retire it's the fastest growing place in um in florida because people are like hey you're leaving cold new york and coming down and god only Mm -hmm. knows what you're gonna find some palm beach floozy who you can like knock the dust off of and go to work (laughs) (laughs) you run down there well there's you know you know you mentioned the guys dying um i think there's i haven't read any statistics but i've i've heard people say this and i think there is truth to it men can't truly retire i don't think they can just not do anything yeah like even even if you become a walmart greeter or take a part-time gig it's a little easier but you got to do something i I think the dudes that actually just retire and are like i'm gonna golf all the time no you're not you're gonna drop dead (laughs) i've said that that's exactly what happened to my granddad you know the secret you have to find i'm never retiring i'm working up till the the lunch on the day i die (laughs) it is what it is Find the right Publix, start being a bag dude, and get a Viagra prescription. And boom, you'll kill it. Like right outside of the village. You'll be the man. Oh, God. You want to uh, go knock some dust off some silver foxes there, bud? If Carolyn's dead, sure. Okay. <laughs> I can promise you already you're going to lose that. She'll outlive you. That's how that works. Yeah, you're married. <laughs> I don't doubt that. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, Publix. I was like, you have Publix here? Yeah. <laughs> my um my sis and brother went they you know, family family from another mother. They moved down to Seminole. Okay, Clearwater Seminole County. Clearwater. Oh. Okay. And, uh, my guitar player moved down to Saint Pete's, I wanna say. Then the two of them are not too far away from yeah. each other. Well, I don't Hold on. St. Pete's is north of that bridge, and then he lives in whatever Bart's or whatever down one over that bridge. Right. They're close. Yeah, yeah. So he moved. So, yeah, I went. we all met up in St. Pete's and hung around and watched a concert. It was fucking awesome. And then the next day, I cruised all the way to his place and got ham sandwiched out on the pier and down on the boat and just down there. So that was a lot of fun, too. I like it's Florida. Good. It's a little sticky. It's a little sticky. Yeah, that it's probably the exact opposite of me trying to climb a Colorado mountain. Here we <laughs> yeah. kind of just swim through the air on a daily basis, and after a while you get used to it. Probably all have secret gills just to be able to uh-huh. process the humidity. Um, the best morning I ever had, I think it was like 5 in the morning, I woke up and it was already 85 degrees outside. Yep. And that tells you mm-hmm. what the rest of the day is going to look like. <laughs> I know. Like I get up, I get up early as all balls, and I I get up. The fam bam's you know still asleep. The nieces are all crashed out. I'm out by the pool. Like ah, it's only like 85. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like ah, it's so nice. <laughs> ah. And then uh, yeah, I I buzzed my hair because the first time I went down there, I had long hair. I'm like Jesus Christ, can't do shit with it. It's just I look like sideshow Bob. <laughs> so the next time I went, I had a nice, nice, high and tight. And I was like, oh, thank God. Cause, oh, and I smoke. So trying to smoke down there, it's, it's hard as fuck. You mean like finding places? No, because I don't give a fuck. Like, I'll do it. You know, I try to keep away from kids, but I'm like, if you're a grown ass adult and I'm outside, you made your choice too, bud. <laughs> like we're all grown ups here. You can figure it the fuck out. Cause I lived in, in South Bay, California where it's basically like a pariah. It's like you had your dick out with warts on it. If you were standing <laughs> outside smoking. So I had to get, I had to hard the fuck up and just be like, fuck you guys. I'm, I'm doing the best I can. I'm over here in Marlboro country. Leave me the fuck alone. <clears throat> it was the atmosphere. Oh, then you're not used to breathing water. Yeah. I yep. mean, you get used to it. It just takes more time. Uh, yeah, it was rough. I was like, "Oh my god, I have nicotine fits," but I couldn't have a cigarette. If I get halfway through, <laughs> halfway through to go out because it's too fucking wet and your lungs you can't breathe. You're just like you're I'm drowning. Uh, I'm willing to bet if somebody did a study, we sell the least amount of leather upholstery in the entire country. Oh, I bet because that's a training device too. If you ever sit in a car with shorts on and leather upholstery in Florida, that's a one time. You'll remember it from you were nine yeah. years old for the rest of. Your entire life. Once. Yeah. Once. It'll, it'll cook you. Yeah, we, oh, man. And then 
I mean, we, we ride motorcycles, so we're pretty smart about covering the leather seats. Down there, it didn't matter. It was so hot. You burn your ass no matter what. We cover them, and they're still hot as hell. It's like, oh, my God. My ass cheeks are burning. Um, my buddy, though, he got a, a Calvin seat, so it's air-conditioned. I didn't even know they did such things. <laughs> he makes a lot of money. <laughs> wow, man, for real. He works for Cisco. That's, that's that sounds He's like an, an expensive internet option. internet securities guy. It was it was super nice. He got it out of the package. We put it on. We hooked it up, and it's a simple hookup. There's a there's a a, a thing I had to solder for the battery, but then it, you know an extra coupling off of the negative you know pause neg wires. Do, 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 solder that in, and then it clips in, and then it straps in, and then you just put it on, and fire it up, and it's AC cooled. You got to take it off every so often and recharge it with the standard AC. Jeez. Yeah. I'm still part of the wet ass club. Right? <laughs> Swamp ass. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Man, that's cool. Now we got more friends of Florida. Absolutely. Yeah. I do. I cruise out there as much as I can. It's, it's getting more interesting. Um, it's getting more polarized i guess is the way to put it but if you can avoid all that and just go from bar to bar it's still the same old place right i think that's true in most places yeah we said that <laughs> last week on the show right <laughs> i don't know i might have said that at dinner the other day i had we had uh, uh the the girlfriend's daughter's graduation she finished high school that was a hard fight i'm not gonna lie that was that was a, that was a close call um but she finished and we had she had her little party there, and we were talking to some folks. And I don't know, one guy was saying, I don't know, the her dad's side of the family is um, how should I put this? Not well traveled, traveled, or overburdened with an abundance of education. I am with you. So, you know, me having been well traveled all over the planet. Um, Except for places like Australia, where I'll never go because everything kills you. <laughs> Fuck that place. Everything will kill you. The spiders, the snakes, the alligators, the crocodiles, the TSA, all of them. They will just kill you. The platypus. Platypus. Fucking get that horn in you. Just, eh. I, I just made someone, I made an innocuous comment about how it doesn't matter where you're from, what you're doing. We're all men, and we all just want to be loved, respected, you know, go do a day's work, protect our family. It's like the basic, basic shit. I don't care where, what what part of the planet you're on. You, that's all we really want, deep down inside. We're all the same dude. Exactly. We're looking for love. We're looking for respect. We're looking to make some money. Kind of want that new car. Whatever, you know, we want that thing because we're hunter-gatherers. We're looking for that little thing that we need. I have a guitar fetish. I don't know what yours is anymore. I don't either. We need to find one. I'm, I'm working on my gun fetish right now. Oh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> it's the I people that Bill and Ted pretty much solved the whole issue of the world a long time ago. Be excellent to each other and party on. There party on, go. dudes. Yeah, no, pretty much. You didn't need anything else. Yeah. yeah, we want we want to be fed. We need uh, uh. <laughs> that's it. We're done. Basic biology, <laughs> yeah. dudes. That's all we need. <coughs> that's it. So funny. Exactly. So funny. You can mother us a little bit when we're sick, but aside from that, just... <laughs> that's about it. Yeah. Yeah. Stay away. <laughs> yeah, leave us alone once in a while. What do you want for your birthday? Um, alone time. That, that's pretty much it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, do you like sports there, Robert? I do. Um, yeah. I'd, I'd say actually I've been watching a lot more soccer, which is not a particularly American thing or not as typical as football, but we've gone through our Tom Brady phase down here and the adventure of leaving and not leaving and whatever. So... <clears throat> Well, here on Man Tools, we like to cover uh, some kind of off-the-wall, obscure sports. We do have a soccer story, but uh, I figured we'd get into some sports here. Um, 
And uh, so I'm going to play this little, you know, we got a little intro for the sports segment, and then we'll, uh, we'll get into some sports. All right. If I can find it. There it is. I found it. All right. Well, <laughs> and glory. <laughs> so we start with some soccer. Um, are you familiar with the, uh, the, uh, I don't know what the team name is other than it's Rexham, which, uh, is a soccer club from Wales that Ryan Reynolds did a reality show about how they, him and, and then a, he sold it for a, like, I don't know if he, he sold it, he but did. they he flipped it they, and he made, he got sick of it. Invested. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> they recently played, some uh, former U.S. national women's players. <clears throat> oh boy! And we've talked about this before. There, are, there are just athletic differences between men and women in sports, and I don't think that's really up for debate. Not in any kind of sort of <laughs> way. At least if you are of a certain, I don't even know what it just. I think that there's a new generation of guys who lost like pretty much their entire life that want to win and they figured out exactly the thing like I, if you had the opportunity for me i actually want a gold medal so what i'm planning to do pretty soon is get into special olympics because i'm going to crush and so that's my overall plan that's, that's these guys that's my yeah. opinion anyway well um so so we'll start with the uh before video <laughs> this is this is before the match and uh, this is, uh, let me see, I think it says who it is. It doesn't. All right, well, this is one of the players from the women's team. Message, ready? This message is for Ryan Reynolds and Rob McLean. One, you should be here right now with your squad. Two, your team about to go down in North Carolina. Let's go. Oh, them, them. Wait, she's bragging? Last she's one. bragging, yeah. She's, she's, sitting, she's going to bring her A game. That's what she so, said. So I'm not going to play any of the match. I'll just say that the score was 12 zip. So we go to the after <laughs> video. Hopefully this you're not supposed to be mad. I think I was referring something to referring to something entirely different. No, no, you're yeah, you kind of but. Heather, what's going on over here? You guys are look at this. They're fraternizing with the enemy. I saw you talking with Mark Howard, but look, hey, um, I love that you guys are here, that you're playing, that this is all women. Uh, maybe not the scoreline you were wanting to see, but what's your perspective on what's happening right now? Yeah, listen, we're super proud. Like we're we're so happy to be here at this event. Hopefully, we've proven to anybody like, just go for it, just live, right? And like, what's the worst thing that can happen? We lose 16 nil to Wrexham. We don't care because we're no, living 16, with people, 16, we're being no. brave, uh, and we're having a lot of fun. Honestly, the U.S. has really warmed to Wrexham, obviously, uh, after what Ryan Reynolds and Ralph McElhenney have done. Um, and we know that America loves the U.S. women's national team. So here we have two amazing products. I don't know about I don't that. I don't know about that either. <laughs> I think she got paid for the plug. Denial is not just a river in Egypt. That's all I want to say. <laughs> but the you know. flip of of almost a uh <clears throat> well it's nice to be nominated <laughs> it's almost it's a nice to be added. nominated thank you so much <laughs> we're just having fun man we, we've said this before uh, our eighth grade jv team used to play scrimmage against the girls senior varsity team in basketball like as drills just to go scrimmage to you know keep your wind up and the coaches basically had us knock the shit out of them <laughs> so that they knew what they were in for when they had to go play like uh army you know because we live like three hours away we lived three hours away from air force army fountain fort carson school where it's like it's a bigger school district it's badder motherfuckers that live up here so we're little farm kids so yeah the coaches would do that to them and then he'd have us when i ended up being a senior high school baseball basketball we'd have to go play the college like bench guys and get our asses handed to us so let's just look at it like that like uh they they were trying to well that, that's but the 
the level of uh, arrogance. I don't know. That's like, the word. Yeah. That is the word. You're just going to start yeah. with. You're going. You're really. You think that's what's going to happen? <laughs> right. The graciousness of that man in that moment, where he's just like, "Cool, yeah, yep. great, good game, <laughs> good game, bro." Uh, I'm getting paid for this, right? Okay, half right. It's fair. It's fine. Well, uh, here's here's a sport. Uh, this is this is a clip from the '80s, but I saw this and I just it had to come on the show. Uh, this is from 1980. This is a uh, a bus jumping 20 motorcycles. Yes, just cause. They did stuff like that in the 80s. Remember that? Yeah, we didn't have to wear helmets. In the good old days of evil Knievel. They, yeah. In fact, I think he's wearing a seatbelt that they had to install because <laughs> school, school buses yeah. didn't yeah. have them seat back belts. then. <laughs> and then final warm-up lap coming out of turn four, heading for the straightaway. 11,360 pounds of get it. will be Get it. Or get it. Off a ramp over 20 motorcycles. Jimmy's going to attain a speed of 75 miles an hour. Here he comes. Good, dude. <laughs> wow. Yes. The wheels came off. <laughs> yes. I mean, we all dreamt of doing this as kids. Yes. So, as you said, there's no helmet. There's no pad. For safety precautions, paramedics climbing inside the bus now to check on Jimmy's condition. A world record bus jump. Really amazing when you consider Jimmy has done... World record, which means they had done one before with That's only right. like 18 motorcycles. Right. <laughs> oh, get it, Jimmy. <laughs> I remember wanting to be in the back of the school bus, so you, they'd go over bumps and it would like shoot you up oh. in the air. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yep. I think when I was a kid, I wanted to want to be in the back of Jimmy's bus just then. I said, <laughs> no, let's do it, buddy. <laughs> do it. <laughs> exactly. I remember as a child... Every now and then, they'd hit the bumps in the back, and you'd know if they hit them good because they had the seams in the roof, and you'd see a couple hairs yeah. stuck in the seams yeah. because guys would bang off the roof. That's funny. <laughs> Skadoosh. We were tougher then, though. We were a lot tougher when we were kids. We, he, it, that's true. That is true. Is the, the, yeah. the coddling I've seen lately. Everybody's in, too soft. In, in dating a woman with a, a high school aged kid just going to the events and stuff <laughs> oh man you'd have got your ass handed to you if you ran your mouth like that to you know what i mean like yeah the teacher the coach the other kids somebody would have just handed you your ass a minute ago somebody else's parent oh i remember that when, yeah remember when it? every parent in the neighborhood could whoop any other kid's ah, ass <laughs> those, yeah those oh. are the village mentality days you were yeah. going to get it in school. Then you were going to get it when you went home. And then yep. if the neighbor had to put his hands on you, it's because you did something wrong. Yep. Oh, so yeah. you were going to get it again. But something yeah. happened to that. If I got if I got slapped by some other kid's mom, my mom's question would be, why? What did you do wrong? It wasn't like, how dare she? No. <laughs> how dare and, she? <laughs> and nobody talked. Nobody ran home and told their parents. You will be a pariah like yeah. forever if you... Yeah. Not only that, but your mom whoop your ass too when you got home. You just hope Mr. Johnson didn't fucking call your mom. Like, I know this other kids now. You get into a fight, people are saying no bullying. I'm like, wasn't that the whole purpose of school? Like, you're supposed to get bullied. That's when you get toughened up so you can survive the rest of your life. There, there's a, yeah, there's a, uh, there's like a. I mean, I, I think bullying can go too far, but there's an attitude, the zero tolerance. Yeah, zero, zero tolerance, tolerance policies. It's become like, I don't know. You find a find a balance of uh, hardening up and <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I guess it, it, kids have tools that we didn't have. I mean, it was always one on one. Somebody's gonna talk trash about you. You'd eventually hunt them down and you'd beat the trash out of their mouth. Yep. But now or, they could use like the internet and. Well, that, I think that's the other thing too. Is now. Because uh, back then, also, if you had a problem with a kid at school, it ended at the end of the school day. Exactly. Well, now they're all friends on Facebook. So even it, even if it's the bully, you you have to be friends with them, or you're not cool. Yeah. So you take their shit all day. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, last one for sports here, um, which, by the way, is brought to you by. I forgot to do the sponsor. That's right. This is the best part of sports. Uh, do the sponsor. <laughs> it is brought to you by. 
our friends at the uh, Bearded Veterans Club. Check them out for your uh, beard care needs. You do not have to be a veteran, by the way, to buy from them, nor do you have to join the club. It's just the name of the place. <laughs> there are perks. But they've got uh, <clears throat> you know, beard washes, beard oils, beard... Uh, <clears throat> What am I thinking of? The butter? Yep. All that stuff. All of your beard accoutrement. They even have vitamins for if you don't have a beard yet and maybe uh, think you can't grow one. Try the vitamins out. See if uh, see if maybe it's a nutritional problem that you're having. I'm going to have to do that because um, <clears throat> like I hit puberty everywhere else, but like right here, 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 <laughs> and here, it just doesn't work. That's me. So, a patchwork. Yeah. Yeah. Check right. them out right. at uh, beard.mantoolsmedia.com. And if you put in the code MANTOOLS, you will save 15% on your order. One five. Right on. All right. Last, last sports thing here. Um, <laughs> this is actually a fictitious sport uh, clip, but uh, I love it. And uh, Eric sent it to me and re reminded me of this movie. This is from the movie Foot Fist Way. You were talking about... Uh, the Mighty Gemstones <laughs> earlier. This is uh, uh, Danny McBride, who went on to much bigger things than this little film, but uh, this is kind of where he got his start, and this scene is just hilarious. Walk with the right, distracting back fist, number one side kick, and <clears throat> spin crescent kick. There we go. Boom. Got him. Got him. Got you, didn't she, Rick? No, I was just doing what you told me to do. Well, it's fine. Everyone's entitled to their opinion. <laughs> if you can beat this combination... I think Marge and I know different, don't we, Marge? Yes, sir. Okay, let's do this again. Marge, oh, ready, Marge. stance. Sir. Keep your eyes on Rick, and don't forget the distracting back fist. That's the key. Rick, <laughs> you come with whatever you got. Full contact. No holds barred, okay? Full contact. I'm going to warn you. I don't think you're going to like how this ends, hotshot. Face your partner. Sir. Kung Nae. Sparring stances. CJ. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> She's still alive. <laughs> oh. That was awesome. <laughs> Bam. That is an allegory for women competing in men's sports. I I hate to tell you ladies. <laughs> That's why there's women's sports. <laughs> yes, this right here. This is why there are women's sports. Oh, uh, okay, Karumba. All right, what do we got next, bud? Uh, we got some history. His story. So, so another segment we like to do is the week in his story, okay. uh, where we talk about some historical events and um, maybe learn a thing or two. It's an educational program. That's right. <laughs> No laughing. That's right. Oh, wait. Do we do our mid-roll yet? Uh, this week in the week in history is the first time Trevor has ever forgot to get shit together for the week in history. I, I did not get the script together. <laughs> That's all right. That's okay. We're gonna find out what happened this week in history. Let's see. We'll do we'll do the we'll do it the way I uh, I prep it. Yeah. Well, this will be educational for yeah. all of us. This is uh, fun. So basically, we we have this very important segment that Trevor just goes to Google, types in this internet address. <laughs> really, you lazy yeah. fuck. What? <laughs> It's great. <laughs> this is how it, this is exactly how it's done. All right. Well, let's see what happened today in history. <laughs> Pick a day. So this is what I do. We're on June eighth. Let's see. <laughs> wow, that was a slow day. Uh, I don't know what sounds neat. Here we go. Uh, we're just gonna read them. Let's do it. Let's see. We'll go through the whole day. Might as well. Uh, do you, a day in history. You will, <laughs> we're going to do a day in history. You were you ready for this? I'm ready. All right. Let's see. I'll pop it up. Today in history, U.S. Air Force uh, pilot Captain Scott O'Grady is rescued by the U.S. Marines in Bosnia. Yes, I believe that's uh, 
There's a movie based on that. I think so. Yeah. Also, the year Trevor graduated sixth grade. <laughs> no, it's two years before I graduated high school. Like I said, <laughs> it's a short <laughs> curriculum. <laughs> In this day in 1969, President Richard Nixon meets with President Thieu of South Vietnam to tell him 25,000 U.S. troops will pull out by August. And which comes the saying from Mr. Spock, only Nixon could go to China. <laughs> i tell you what, we look back at that dude with nostalgia and compared to, <laughs> we only thought he was, was a cook. <laughs> yes. That's no, those, gonna, those are where I'm going to get the highlights from. Those are, that's where you're going to cut out <laughs> so we don't get blocked. In 1968, James Earl Ray, the alleged assassin of Martin Luther King Jr., is captured at the London airport. Doing what, I wonder? Uh, running. But he already ran, didn't he? He made it all the way to, to London. Nah, that fucker was a scapegoat. The government killed him. I, mean, I think all, he's more, maybe. Yeah. I mean, you know. There was a particular little age there where I think the government was filling in all the blanks. <laughs> I, yeah, the 60s, it's like the feds were just like, all right, this guy's got to go. All right, that guy's got to go. Oh, man, we're running out of guys to scapegoat these on. Yeah. Damn it, we need a riot. Okay, let's put guys in there. We'll just, we'll just call it a riot. <laughs> Fuck. Man. And it's interesting. <clears throat> Somehow, Lyndon Baines Johnson benefited from all these things, yet hmm. you can't. Go out there and say that he might have been involved in any of it. No. <laughs> he was a Come transvestite. <laughs> LBJ. He was ahead of his time, evidently. He was ahead of his time. Uh, uh, let's see. Oh, this was a big deal. Oh, that was a big deal. 1967, Israeli airplanes attack the USS Liberty, uh, a surveillance ship in the Mediterranean, killing 34 Navy crewmen. I'm surprised that still in the news and i know that sounds a little messed up but there's a way of things like this getting washed out yeah that's yeah. true yeah and we just pretended like nothing happened and we're like ah well this was oh it's just an accident it's this fine was, this was kind of the franz ferdinand <laughs> of the vietnam war like if you if you really kind of want to draw that parallel you might have to educate us or at least me yeah so World War Two, Franz Ferdinand. World War One. Sorry, World War One. <laughs> I was getting there. I was working backwards. Uh-huh. <laughs> David Copperfield over here, telling a long story. Franz Ferdinand was assassinated, which drug uh, what are now the Allied forces into the First World War. Okay. And it was kind of by accident. It, the guy missed him, fucked up, was gonna get busted, ran to a coffee shop. But the motorcade went, oh, Jesus, and they fucking pulled over, and they pulled into the alley next to the coffee shop, and the guy was like, fuck it. Took a second <laughs> shot. Yeah. Took it and blew him up. <clears throat> uh, what a messy day. Uh, let's see. Where are we at now? We're in 1953. Oh, God, I wish I could do my uh, – I wish I could do the Casey Kasem. Can't do it. My brain's not working right. After being turned away at a local diner, 68-year-old African-American... Oh, I'm so sorry. 86-year-old <laughs> African-American activist Mary Church Terrell and civil rights uh, group score a major victory as Supreme Court rules against segregated lunch counters in Washington, D.C. I got to say that um, speaking just from personal me, the people of that age had a lot more fortitude. Because I'm the kind of guy the restaurant doesn't want me. I don't want to eat there for fear of what you're gonna to do to my food. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, it, and here's... then you get that you get that 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 old man and old lady fucking the bullshit's gone. They're here's, like, oh hell no. Here's something interesting though that we've kind of touched on. It wasn't necessarily the restaurants. Segregation was the law. So it was the state saying you have to do this, whether it's good uh-huh. for your business or not, whether you want to do it or not. If you had a business in one of those states, you didn't have a choice. That kind <laughs> no. of sounds like Florida right now with the last thing that happened here with um, immigration, the last rules that just got passed. And it was supposed to affect business owners. The design was to make owners comply with rules and provide all these benefits. For immigrants but realistically basically it sounded like all immigrants are going to be punished and if you got a whole bunch of people that went out of their way to illegally make it all the way to florida 
it's not going to be a big thing from then to move to the next state. It's, oh, not, a, yeah. it's not a big leap. That's, so, jeez. We got no agriculture right now. We got no, like, building is slowed down to a crawl. You won't see it in the news, but mm-hmm. it's that same sort of thing. Laws get passed, and nobody actually thinks about the conquest or, or the consequences. I don't know well, if it's a stunt or what. No, I, I, I'm, I've said this before, and it, it bears repeating that. Uh, those in the high tower are decoupled from reality. They just, exactly that. they're not down here in the ditch with the rest of us, the day to day grind. They don't see it. They don't get it. And, you know, let's face it. They're not going to hit a food truck and, uh, get you a burrito. You know what exactly I mean? Exactly. Like, and hang out with some salt of the earth people. Oh, pupusas. I got pupusas today from a food <laughs> truck across the street. Fuck yes. And hung out with the little lady. Hung out with her for like 20 minutes before the show. It's like, oh, no, I better get over to Man Tools. And I, that's, that's the places I like to hang out. That's the outside uh, of being in Florida as far as um, Hispanic food. Pupusas is a woman on Facebook that's like two neighborhoods over. See, here's the thing. You get to use the word Hispanic food because you're fortunate enough to have Cuban, Mexican, Honduran, Venezuelan, Venezuelan, <laughs> Ecuadorian. You got plantains. You get you get all the you get all the goodness. We absolutely. I mean, we're we're uh, I don't know. We have a little bit of Mexican and a little bit of Honduran and very little Cuban food. But you can get a good steak up there. Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, word of advice: never, ever, ever get Mexican food in Oregon. <laughs> Don't do it. Okay. Don't do it. I was up that as gospel. Don't do it. Yeah, yeah. Bizarre. Pa- Pakistani food, for whatever reason, fuck yeah. <laughs> you, yeah, that's good stuff. Mexican food, not so much. All right, this day in 1947, Sarah. Uh, I'm gonna ruin this. Paretsky. Uh, was a detective novelist was born. That's also, great. birth. Yeah, we're just doing birthdays today. Uh, <clears throat> we're down to the birthdays. Uh, physician and author of Spontaneous Healing, Andrew Wheel, was born today in 1942. Uh, Herb Adderley, American football player, born 1939. Barbara Pierce Bush, first lady of the 41st president, George H. W. Bush, also known as King George the First, was born. <laughs> On this day, 1925, Robert Preston, actor, actor, uh, the mu- and the Music Man, was born 1918. Uh, Francis Ch- Crick, British scientist who discovered the structure of DNA, was born on this day in 1916. And that pretty much wraps it up. Um, oh no, we got one more. Oh, dude, the guy, the goat, Frank Lloyd Wright. American architect, one, arguably one of the greatest American architects, was born on this day in, 19, in 1867. Hmm, slow day. <laughs> A slow day in history. What happened in your history? All right, everybody get your Facebook out. What happened in your history today? This is what happens when Trevor fucks up. <clears throat> so we get to go inside baseball. <laughs> You mentioned George Bush as a president. It's very funny. I felt very happy when that man was president. I'm like, here you were the director of the CIA. You probably know where all the bodies are buried because you buried half of them yourself. So I'm reasonably comfortable that if you're fucking me, at least I'm not going to get fucked from some other country. Pretty much. Well, (sighs) if correct me if I'm wrong, but we also had a demo. We had a Republican president and a democratic congress at that point so the best thing happens when that happens nothing gets done they fight with each other and they leave us the peasants the fuck alone <laughs> keep playing your game of thrones yeah. Yeah. they go play game they go they go play their reindeer games and nothing gets done we passed a bill i veto it uh, yeah we're not doing it. they don't get anything done for four years and we prosper like if you've ever noticed that it just happens yeah the only thing that got done was the new taxes that he said he wouldn't do. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Feed the rich. That always read, happens. Read read my lips. <laughs> no no new, new taxes. taxes. 
Here's some new taxes. Here's some new taxes. <laughs> Damn, dude, it wasn't even June. Yeah, that guy. The oh. lives were a lot cleaner, though. Now they're just a, a whole, whole new level of good Lord, what in the hell is going on? I feel yeah. like um, in a lot of ways, the the world is just sitting back and watching us. We're the sitcom now. Whoa, we whoa. are actually like... Like yeah, it used to be the it used tears. to be the Russians. We'd be like those fucking crazy bastards. Not anymore. Exactly. Now it's us. We're cheers, exactly. They want to all sit down and watch. Let's go see what's going on in the United States today. Well, I don't know. Something crazy. We'll fly somebody somewhere, or do this or do that, or we'll cause some sort of chaos internally yep. and just stir ourselves up. And my biggest problem with that is that people, the people who hard fought and won for their voices, and to in. You know, and and to reaffirm the rights that they have, because some of it, I don't know if it got taken away or just, you know, swept under the rug in the last 20, 25 years. And now you're just a fucking joke. That's the part exactly. we were talking about the other day. Now you're just a, you're a sitcom. You're a TikTok joke. It's a, it's a satire now. So all that shit that, you know, your your parents, you know, sweated for and your grandparents sweated for and the generation before you sweated for and did and worked together and did. The, it's all just now you're just comic relief. And that that's the part that bums me out. That's the part that bums me out the most. We have nothing left to look up to. I mean, there used to be a time. And don't get me wrong. I'm not sure if I remember it. And maybe it's not in living memory, but leadership meant something. And this person had they had to be of a of a certain character to lead, and that was the point. And looking at that ideal, the citizenry would try to be a little bit better, and those that did not, I mean, they might be the outlaws, but it's like now it's grab with both hands, every yeah. single thing that you can. And like you said, and, screw the little dude because he's the easiest to screw, and, and there's a lot of it. Yeah, and a lot of us. And And the older I get, I realize that, you know, the sheriff and the outlaw were both good dudes. They just didn't see eye to eye there, there was honor there was uh i mean they were purists right. there was fights but there was there's the honor amongst the you know the out i've i've dabbled in the outlaw world and it's it's was pretty honorable up until it wasn't and they were purists yeah, yeah it's like no i no i'm an outlaw because i feel like you know i'm a purist and i, I feel, uh, <clears throat> let's just let's just talk motorcycles in the 1960s you were on the fringe of society just like every other fringe of society if you didn't fit into that social norm you got your ass run off the road just like anybody else in the 60s um if you were irish if you were black if you were um uh, mormon if you were native motorcyclist, american. <laughs> native american chinese you got run off or shot and you know on the side of the road nobody did shit about it so those folks all got organized across the board, got litigious. Now we have weekend warriors riding motorcycles down the highway. No big deal. It's just the thing. And I'm using this as a you know parallel. Here we are now where you, these fucking kids are just crotch rocketing in through town, causing a ruckus, and like forgot all about how great granddad had would literally get shot on the side of the road. For just riding a motorcycle, and now you're being an ass. Now you're being a joke. So that whole like weird cycle thing comes back around, and I kind of I don't mean to buzz kill this show. God damn! But <laughs> <laughs> it frustrates me. All the stuff that we all we all did and we all tried to make awesome is now just you know kind of getting peeled away. Something happened, and I couldn't put an exact date on it, but I can definitely put an exact cause on it. Um, if you go back, I don't even know when, England, to have a corporation was a royal charter. It's something that the king had to give you because they understood how powerful this tool was. And back then, the, the, I guess the key company was the East India Trading Company. It grew up, and it became very powerful. Well, now you have those tools but anybody can create them and you have these things and amazon's not loyal to the u.s no matter how much money it makes off of the yeah. US, it's going to go and buy its stuff or build its stuff or make it wherever it can make it the cheapest so all of the profits are coming from us we're the farm and we're constantly being well 
milked, I guess is the best way to put it. Yeah. We're more like milk cows. We're being milked for all of our dollars, <clears throat> and they take the money and go wherever. There's no corporate loyalty, which is why we have no factories, no manufacturing. All of that stuff that should be here moves someplace else when the labor was cheaper. Mm-hmm. And it, it's terrible. And they do it internally. The only reason we have... The only reason Colorado Springs has uh, an Amazon hub now is because we basically told them you don't got to pay for shit for the next 25 years. And they fucked over New Jersey real bad. The only thing we're getting out of it, and I call this, you remember this, is five years ago they started digging up I-25 and making the corridor way bigger. I'm like, we're going to get an Amazon hub. Everyone's like, no, it's going to New Jersey. I'm like, no, it's going to happen. I I saw them laying the groundwork. There's no reason they would have uprooted that whole I-25 corridor from Denver to Colorado Springs without a good reason. It was good enough. But now there's more trucks. Yeah. More planes. So, yeah, they don't even have loyalty inside the state. It's like just wherever wherever it's going to be the cheapest. Exactly. And politicians being so transient and needing dollars you just put money in somebody's pocket oh you're gone the next guy will put money in his pocket and we'll keep our agenda up but once again screw we the people pretty much yeah pretty much and the the dubiousness of it is i mean you say yeah you know the the politician got a bunch of money the dubiousness of it is he turned right back around and just used that so he could get reelected again it's like he might have made a little bit but majority of it was and this is the part pisses me off the majority of that money went for him to go not do his job, for him to just go back out on tour and go promote himself to get reelected and not sit there and do his job. Imagine what would happen if one of them actually tried to make a difference. I know, That'd right? scary. Well, you know, we'd have the 1960s all over again and <laughs> do a shot. And Free love. <laughs> government would be like, oh, well, we got to get rid of this guy. We'd hear about a... A guy getting caught in London. <laughs> Son of a bitch. <clears throat> I mean, where do you think we're going though? Politically, I don't know. It's a long question and it's a long We question. are we are we are definitely heading worse and worse into a mob mentality, which what will happen is let me see if I can predict this. So in five years you guys will meet back up here on this day in history. <laughs> And I predict it will be a mob rules mentality with an oligarchy just in total control and making it seem like you wanted Trevor to be president because they just popped him up there. They wagged the dog. This is the guy. This is the guy. This is the guy. They put all the money behind you. You know what I mean? And we're like, and everybody went, yes, we want him. We don't know why. Just do it now. And that's what's happening. So you'll think you... you, you the people will think they have ultimate power, and it that's it all was wag the dog. That was a good movie, by the way. Mm-hmm. Dumb and Dumber too, <laughs> which is not Dumb and Dumber. What's the one? Idiocracy. That's yeah. kind of what the world is starting to look a lot like. Yeah, uh, we've said this on this show. Idiocracy, 1984. Those were not manuals, people. Those were warnings. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't how we we're supposed to run the country. <clears throat> God, what an age. I was waiting for Trevor to say something when he came in the building today. Because I was taking a dump and I was going to go, go away, (laughs) Baton. I'm Baton. Go away, (laughs) Baton. You mean like water, like in the toilet? (laughs) You broke my house. (laughs) Uh, Well... I really on that, on that, on that, note, on that yeah. wonderful high note. Oh, Ow, my balls. <laughs> Ow, my balls. <laughs> that brings us to the uh to the end of the show, unfortunately. Sad days, sad days. Well, thank you for having me on. Oh man, when you come back anytime, we'll hang out. We should probably have you for one of the man tools at the movies. Oh, that would be fun. That'd be fun as hell. I'd like it. Let me know. Yeah, for sure. We want. We, you ever see Mystery Science Theater three thousand? With yeah, the we, puppets on the bottom. Yeah, we do that shit. <laughs> we watch movies and give it hell. No, that would be fun. It's super fun. Uh, all right, Robert. Let's do a little gratuitous self promotion. Where can everybody find you? This is Robert Mack, Public 
loss adjusters. We are in Florida. We're ready to help you, the public, with any sort of insurance claim. Public loss adjusters, PLAclaim.com. PLAclaim.com. Just a side note, from someone who is on the other side of that table, I highly recommend a public adjuster. That way you actually get what you're signing up for. It's one more set of eyes on your project to help you get where you needed to go. You will be receiving a beer in the mail. Absolutely. <laughs> We'd like to thank our guest, Robert Mack, insurance adjuster. Uh, locals members, Man Tools at the Movies, Big Orexia Part 2 is out now. Uh, get it and all of our members only content for just $3 a month at mantoolsminions.locals.com. Our merch, we have new merch. It's awesome merch. It's cool merch. Trevor needs to send me the other merch place because I need to make some cool shit for a different company. Merch.mantoolsmedia.com. And get free shipping if in your, you are in our Facebook group or 20% off if you're a Locals member. Um, you can combine those. I don't care. Or you can try. What? What are you talking about? I don't know. Well, I'm just saying. Oh, the codes? Yeah. 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 You can combine them. Get, get free shipping, 20% off. Just get it. Get it. Get in there and get it. Thank you to our sponsors. You can find all of our sponsors, including EXO Auto Works. And uh, uh, I was going to rattle them off like a champ, but fail. <laughs> fail. EXO Auto Works. Uh, we like to go to Valley EXO Auto Works, Valley Food Storage, Kratom. Um, man, top Extracts. Top Extracts. There it is. Yeah. I, I used a lot of Top Extracts this weekend. That was a lot. That helped with the pain, actually. Um, Kratom is interesting. If you haven't tried it yet, I would definitely recommend it in that it works like an opio opioid, but is not addictive and it, it wears off after just a little while. Um, gives you a euphoric state and kind of some interesting mental clarity. Dulls the pain yeah. if you're like old me and you're old and broken and you try to go climb sand dunes with your fucking rowdy dog. That <laughs> Uh, again, all of our sponsors are at Mantools, or sponsors.mantoolsmedia.com. Thank you for watching and or listening wherever you're pooping and listening to podcasts. On the web at mantoolsmedia.com. Our social media is links.co slash mantoolsmedia. Trevor's OnlyFans is big, sexy, elk stag at onlyfans.net. Nope. Nope. That's not a thing. Dot sack. But you can check out dot the balls. world's okayest guitar. You <laughs> <YouTube. laughs> That's right. You can check out the world's okayest guitarist. <laughs> Me. I'm the okay world's okayest guitarist. Uh, where is it? On YouTube. YouTube.com slash world's okayest guitarist. Videos coming soon. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Thanks again, Robert. Thank you. Have a great night, guys. You too. All right. Good night, everybody. <laughs>